Well, this is my milling machine, and as you can see, I've made a bit of a start on installing the DRO. Um, up here in the top right is the screen, and I've got that mounted up, and I'm about to fit the first axis, which is the x-axis, which is the left to right on the main table. The screen is very easy to fit. It's just an articulating arm, and it sits on a bracket that's got two tapped holes straight into this um, overarm casting. Now I think this is going to be slightly different for all three of the axes on my machine, but um, on some of them the scale is going to be stationary and the um, reed head will slide, and on others the reed head will be held stationary and the scale will slide. So on this first one, the x-axis, the scale is going to slide relative to the rest of the machine. So I'm going to start by fitting that. I'm lucky because this and this face are both machined pretty flat. And that means I can mount the the scale and the reed head directly to it, I think. Maybe with some parallel shims, but um, I think I think it's going to be pretty straightforward, this one. Um, I've just clamped a couple of 1, 2, 3 blocks to the, to the actual ways surface, and that just gives me an initial point for setting up the holes on the ends of this scale. Now these holes have slotted um, slotted holes, so I can tune it in both planes um, once I've got some once I've got some holes in place. Here's the back of the table from the other angle. And on here you can see that I've got three screws that held a, a rubber way cover to protect this knee from chips. I need to probably need to rethink that afterwards, especially the center one. That's where the reed head's going to sit. I want to maintain access to these oiler ports. Um, it'd be nice to maintain access to these way wipers. And uh, I think I'm going to make a rubber bung or a Dalrin bung or something so that the table, um, when I wind it back towards the column, bottoms out on that bung rather than on the scale itself because it will just crush it. Hopefully you can see this. I've got um, a clamp on each end just nipping the metal brackets that are on the end to the table so that it's lightly held and I'm just going to start these off with a drill bit. I'm going to use a 6mm drill bit because I've got a 6x15 slot and the screws are actually 5mm so there's 10 and 1mm of slop. Um, so it's pretty forgiving. Um, I'll get it. I'll get it so it's as centered in that hole as I can by eye, and then we'll clock this in with a with a clock set on a uh, mag base set on here. Also, pay attention to the direction that you poke the cable out because my um, my screen is that way. Obviously, I don't want to poke the cable out this side. Okay, the 6mm bit was just to centre it uh, left and right in the in the 6mm slot. Um, it'll be an M5 by 0.8 thread, so I'll need a 4.2 um, tack drill. But I'll go through with a probably a 3mm drill bit first, just to uh, just to make it easier. Well, I don't have a 4.2mm drill bit, but I do have an 1164, which is 437 so that's close enough. Okay, I've got this needle on the flat area of this extrusion. The extrusion is actually fairly flexible. In the middle you can move it a few hundredths. Um, yeah, it's a hundredth indicator, so each little tick is 
one hundredth of a mil, one hundredth of a millimetre, or four ten thousandths of an inch. And I have to shuffle the reed head backwards and forwards on the, along this scale as I'm indicating because it actually sits between two oil ports. So I'll be pretty careful. Okay, it's on zero. Basically, seventeen hundredths over that length, which is about six hundred mil, six and a half thou. It's not much, but it's enough that I'm going to correct it because I know these things are pretty sensitive to within like a couple of thou. And as it stands, um, I need to pack this end out by by that amount. The scale is, and the mounting point distance is slightly longer than the distance I'm able to tra uh, span on the indicator. So the 18 hundredths, I've just done a quick calculation and I've put a 20, thou, uh, sorry, 20 hundredths shim under this right hand end here. Um, I'm going to zero up. That's good enough. Slide the reed head the other way this time. Oh, that's on plus one to start with. Six hundredths. I think it was on plus one. So that's five hundredths. That's two thou over the length. That's pretty good. I know I've got some 0.31 shim stocks, I'm going to just swap out that shim at the other end and we'll see how we go. Alright, that's pretty much zero. I've got a 26 hundredths shim under that end now. And we're reading z between zero and one. It's reading two under at the moment, but I think there's a bit of a bow in the extrusion. Be the end of travel there. So we start and finish within a hundredth, which is four tenths. That's plenty good enough. There's a bit of a S shape in the extrusion, which you've got to expect. Okay, now we try the other axis or the other plane. Okay, now the extrusion is is dipped, but. I'm looking for the readings on the on the two ends, um, and uh, starting at zero, cable is all the way that way. So that was a max deflection of fifteen hundredths, and that's the end of travel. So we're back to zero. Well, this is now trammed in in two directions. This is. Really, uh, really nicely fitted, and um, the next piece is this reed head. Now I'm led to believe that this little red spacer in there protects it during shipping and allows it to slide without fouling the uh, delicate glass scale inside. It also allow also gives you a way of um, fitting the spacing and the alignment and everything correctly. So with that squeezed into place, I believe. Um, that's going to work. Now the bracket they gave isn't going to isn't going to cut it. Uh, I could use it that way and put some holes in here, but I think I'd just as well start again with um, a piece of aluminium angle. Now, there should be no forces on this thing ever. And like I said, I'm going to make a plastic bobbin that stops this ever reaching the column, so this this stuff never gets crushed. Anyway, I'll knock up a quick bracket with some slots for the... Um, needs to be adjustable in the other two axes, of course. It needs to be adjustable this way and up and down. And obviously along the length it slides. So, yeah. So, I'll make that now.
Well, I made up a bracket that suits the um, reed head. This was just a really gnarly bit of angle aluminium that I've sort of faced off on all the sides. I made, I made a bit of a bit of a balls up here. I put an extra hole in in the wrong place. It's not going to make a big difference though, because I'm going to only really be using the center center piece of this slot, so it should never come into play. Uh, but it's a bit embarrassing. I might replace it later. But right now, I'm just keen to see this DRO running. So let's get on with it. Right, I've got the table all the way to the left. These uh, these slots match up quite nicely. With that squeezed up against the red thing there, I'm going to mark these holes for the centre points and screw this on. Well, I've got one axis done, and I'm pretty pleased. Um, I've just done the, just been through the book and done the linear compensation, and uh, it's it's pretty amazing how accurate the old lead screw in this table is. It's you know within within microns, within ten thousandths of an inch. Um, so basically, you you do a long travel, you do a long measurement, and see what the discrepancy between the table lead screw hand wheel is and the and the uh, DRO, and then you put a, a, a factor in there, like a linear compensation factor. And you can now see if I if I wind that table backwards and forwards, I get numbers coming up on the screen. So uh, just uh, one down, two to go. Cheers.